Welcome to Cars Plus. This is a demo for installing carpeting in your vintage car or truck. First, we'll remove old materials and clean and prep the truck floor. Then we'll install the underlayment, the heat shield, and the carpet. We have tips and tricks to make this easier, and we'll finish with the hardware, kick panels, and final look. Here we are with the first step of replacing the carpet in the 76 pickup, and that's to get rid of all the old sound deading, carpet, etc., that was in here. There wasn't much left of the carpet, but as you can see, the sound deading had to be removed with a large putty knife, and there was quite a bit of it still in here, even though some of it had been removed in the past. And it's just gross, and it has to go. And of course, you see we're vacuuming out and scraping, and there's going to be a bunch of this because you want all of this residue removed. It's going to take you a while to do it. I'd say I probably spent between an hour and maybe an hour and 15 minutes scraping all this stuff and vacuuming repeatedly until I got everything out. You might even find, depending on where you're getting into, a smaller uh, putty knife or even a screwdriver might be helpful. But get all this out before you do the next step because it'll just turn to mud and gunk. You see right there on the end of the vacuum, I've got a can with a soldered in uh, tube that helps me get into a small area. Here I'm using Dawn dish soap, just a little bit of it in warm water, complete with some vinegar, about a cap full, white vinegar. And I'm scrubbing the whole area with a scrub brush and then coming back and wiping it down with old towels. The idea here is to remove any other residue and dirt that you can possibly get off of the surface at this point. Now you'll notice I didn't even have the seat in here that came out with four bolts and if you watch seat upholstery you know how we did that. You can see I haven't yet removed the two mounts for the seat belts and we have information on why we did that in the past, how we extended those up. But this will take you a while too. Do a good job. You'll spend another half hour to an hour doing it. There I'm taking out the seat belt mounts. They have to be out of the way for the next step. Now one of the things you won't really see here because it's boring anyway is that any spot on the floor that is not in real good shape is going to have to be treated with some paint and or prim primer and or paint in the near future. Right now you can see I'm using prep all as another step in cleaning everything before I even do that paint which I'm discussing because you'll see it come up in the scene. There it is right there. Uh, the black was just used because we're going to cover it all up. Doesn't matter. That was just in the area that was not completely uh, covered with paint. You can see there's the multi-purpose adhesive that we're going to spray the entire floor with. The purpose being to stick down our underlayment which is the next step in this process. This particular brand I showed you works really well for me. There are others but I'm just showing you what works for me each time. The entire floor has to be sprayed down. This is going to take you a couple minutes. Everything you want to coat it Besides, you want it to tack up a little bit before you throw the underlayment on it. Notice I didn't care what any of the other colors were. All this is being covered up. Who cares? Here's our underlayment piece. It comes as a one-piece item. You can see it's got certain cuts in it. And you'll find I'll have to use a utility knife in a moment to cut it in a couple of places so that it fits really well. Because the adhesive is not going to instantly stick, to this, we can reposition it. No, there's no adhesive placed on the back of that part. There's a utility knife. I had to cut this area apart just a little bit so it'll conform to the hump in the floor. Now, initially, all you're trying to do is lay this in place. Those wires go underneath the uh, door sill plates, so I'm just trying to keep them out of the way for the purpose at hand. Rough idea how your fit's going to look. Doesn't look very good yet. Well, there's a solution to this and exactly what you have to do. Here you see I'm coming in with a heat gun. Be sure you at least wear nitrile gloves. You might want to wear leather gloves because you really want to heat up this uh, material fairly hot so you can push it into place and make it conform. 
This again is going to take you some time, but it's going to save you so much money over going and having a professional do it. But you're kind of seeing what the professional is going to have to go through. So you could do this at home yourself. One caution with a heat gun, this has really happened to me, always unplug your heat guns when you're done using them. I've had one catch fire just sitting there. Probably because something got too hot inside of it at some point and just leaving it plugged in, it shorted out and we got a fire with it. And luckily I was in the room and could walk it outdoors. <laughs> That's exactly what I did, but I always unplug them from now on. There you see what happens after probably 45 minutes worth of work at the heat gun and pushing everything down. Everything conforms beautifully. There we're back with the same spray adhesive, going to spray everything down again because the next thing is going to be the sound deadening and a heat shield combination. The silver side being the heat shield, you're going to see the sound deadening being what looks like uh, you saw before in the car or truck in this case. Be sure to get a nice liberal coat and I did not put it on the heat shield itself. I carefully spread the heat shield out and that's about what it's going to look like when you get it in there. And then you have to move it around till it's in the right position. Now a little bit I'm going to tell you about them obvious mistake I made and hopefully you won't make it. So there's all the effort getting that thing into place, starting to push it down against the adhesive. Won't take as long as the underlayment piece. That takes a lot more time to put in. This is much easier at this point. Here I'm bringing in the carpet. Now something to keep in mind with the carpet is you want to have set the carpet out in the sun for no more than about 30 minutes. That'll loosen it up. It'll come rolled up when it's shipped to you. You need to loosen it a little bit. It is a molded carpet though, so you do not want to have it out in the sun too long or you'll start to unmold it. So about 30 minutes max is all you need. That's just so you can get it unrolled and put into place and you can see how it's roughly gonna fit. Now, one of the things that's real important to know here is once you get this all done, you close the vehicle up, keep the windows closed, couple hours or maybe a couple days that thing is going to fit the vehicle beautifully the wrinkles will all go away you notice i have the large putty knife there now while you can't see it it's real simple if you have the truck in front of you i'm just tucking in along the metal edge where the door sills will be reinstalled this is a good time to tell you that shortly you're going to see that I'm using it all to find holes again. Well, that makes sense, particularly along the door sills. I've got to find the screw holes. But the mistake I made that you don't want to make is when you do the underlayment, find your four big holes and your two holes, for, four big holes for the seat, the two holes also for the seat belts, and cut those areas out. Do the same thing when you put in your. Uh, sound deadening and heat shield it'll be so much easier to find the locations yes I did find them with an all but I made that harder than I should have so don't do that when you're doing it you see here I'm putting seat belt attachment in and that one was easy but I gotta tell you finding the ones in the middle where the uh, middle seat belts attached was probably the hardest thing I had to do I should have done what I said do what I say not what I did in that case This is a process of going back and putting all the hardware in at this point. Especially not difficult if you've found the holes like I suggest. There I'm putting back the door sills, the door sills on a 76 for example, and a number of pickups at the time are two pieces. And you're just going to have to put them back in and screw them down, always adjusting the carpet to make sure you get the carpet underneath because that is what holds the edge of the carpet. For the most part, your carpet really is just laying in the vehicle. And it will take a little fitting. Always keep using something such as the large putty knife. Do not use a small screwdriver. That's about the time you'll put a hole in this brand new carpet. Now on the side here, there are plastic kick panels up above. I didn't completely remove them, but I do loosen the screws so I can slide the carpet kick panel pieces in. Now, a thing to note here is those ultimately need to be contact cemented in. At this time, I didn't do that. I wanted to see how they fit and what I could see behind them. Reality is you can see a little gap between the carpet and the piece there. And before we get to that, let's talk about this. Here I'm touching up the plastic. You have to use a vinyl or plastic paint. 
there. Used a little pre-cleaner and I'm touching it up using some spray because there was a little spot that wasn't the right color. When you look at the other side here, now we're going to put in the floor switch for your high beams. Notice I put a piece of underlayment under it. That's why I showed it to you. And you're going to have to screw this back on top of your floor. Now I've got the carpet folded over in that area so I can accomplish this. Now once this is screwed down, we're going to have to cut a hole in the carpet for that switch. And there isn't a practical way to do this before it's in the vehicle. You'll get your hole in the wrong place, so doing it this way is the way you want to do it. See, I'm flipping the carpet over. Now I'm going to use a sharp razor blade and I'm going to start a hole and very carefully cut a hole out that will just fit around the switch. You'll also have to remove some of that underlayment behind the carpet because you'll have a plastic piece here. It looks like a circle, but it's got a slot in it. And you have to fit that in, and only the carpet will fit in that edge. You won't be able to fit the underlayment in it, so you do have to cut some of the underlayment behind it out of the way. And you need that so it doesn't fray around your switch. And it takes some futzing around, it isn't that long, and you'll get that in place. Now back to what I was saying before, if you notice on the lower side here, you can see a white line between the carpet and the edge of the pickup wall. That shows you something that even when you fit the carpet in you'll find out there'll still be a little white line. That's why I didn't glue it in in the first place. I needed to see if I need to go back and spray some black paint in there, which I do. So I would strongly suggest you fit your carpet and if you need to spray some paint back in there to hide whatever color it is, that's what you want to do before you glue the carpet in. That's why the carpet wasn't glued in on either side at that point. And that you would want to spray contact cement both on the pickup wall and on the carpet to fasten it in place because there's anything else fastening it other than the plastic lip at top. And there you see the finished result of doing the carpet here. It is nice that we have a good carpet set in here.